to give me some information on Fred Olsen Cruises sailing from Belfast, which is great, hassle-free, no flying, and just turn up at Belfast and away we go. Um, we also have a specific cruise that I'm actually going to be hosting in June of next year, which Carrie will um, elaborate on as we go, go on. So, and if there's any questions at all, uh, please feel free to um, make a note of them, put them on the chat, or at the very end, you can ask them directly. So I'm gonna pass you over to Kerry. Kerry, thank you for coming on, and um, I'll let you take it from here, okay? <laughs> Brilliant, thank you so much, Grace. Uh, well, a very good morning, everyone. And as we already said, welcome. This is gonna be a presentation on Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, uh, in, in particular, sailing out of Belfast, which we're excited to be returning to for 2022. So like Grace has already mentioned, if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them at the end of the presentation. Um, I was very fortunate enough to have worked on board the Fred Olsen ships for over seven years. So I've been to a lot of the destinations we will be talking about today. And I have worked on um, a number of the ships within the fleet. So please, if there's any questions at all, feel free to ask me. So I'm just going to share my screen with you now. And hopefully you will be able to see... Oh, hang on two seconds. That's both of us. <laughs> Can you see the screen now? No. No? Okay, hold on. Let's get back. Yes. Can you see that? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. So um, we work very closely with Miles Morgan Travel. And like I said, we do lots of group departures. So we're going to be talking about specific group departures from Belfast as well for you. So just some of the things I'm going to cover off today with you. Uh, introducing Borealis, which is our very new ship that we're going to be sailing out of Belfast. 2022 so a sneak peek at getting her ready so she's a new ship that we purchased last summer so making sure that she's a very much going to be a Fred Olsen ship can I just ask has anybody cruised with Fred Olsen previously no no, no. have you cruised with any other cruise line before yeah yeah okay yeah yeah okay doke so a sneak peek at getting her ready. What we're doing, obviously, our ships are currently up in Scotland in Rosyth, um, making sure that they are ready when we're able to set sail again on the 5th of July this year. Reasons why you would want to cruise with Fred Olsen Cruise Lines in the future. The Mars Morgan escorted groups with Grace. Our enjoyment promise that we have an all-inclusive drinks package. Any future cruise vouchers, I guess, if you've not cruised with Fred Olsen before, that's not really going to be relevant. But that's mainly for anybody that um, sadly had any cruises with us cancelled for last year and up until at this point. And then the plain sailing guarantees. So any questions that you may have about what if you book a cruise and later it's changed or cancelled due to various reasons, including COVID, then uh, we do have the plain sailing guarantee for peace of mind booking a cruise. And then, of course, any questions that you may certainly have at the end. So first of all, let's look at Borealis. So like I mentioned, Borealis is our new ship and she's going to be serving the port of Belfast for 2022. So we're very excited to have a new ship. Um, She's going to have a capacity of 1,357 passengers. So rest assured, she's still very much a small ship. She's not one of these giant ocean liners that carry thousands and thousands and thousands of passengers. We still um, pride ourselves on having small ships. So 1,357 passengers on board, that is considered a small ship. And anything really under 1,500 guests is considered a small ship. The great thing with this new ship as well is she's much more spacious. She is larger, although there's not a massive um, increase in passenger numbers on board. And the other great advantage, actually, is she's one of the fastest cruise ships out there on the water. So she has a maximum speed of 25 knots, whereas um, our previous two vessels that we had, Boudicca and Blackwatch, uh, previous years, were only about 18, 19 knots. So they are quicker which also means that you can get to destinations a lot quicker and back again. So you're able to explore more of the world in a quicker amount of time. So this is a um, artist impression of what the ship's going to look like. 
And like I said, we have been busy painting her, um, putting in new carpets and all sorts of things. So we've been painting the outside, the funnels, making them very much a Fred Olsen ship. So just to give you an idea, the gentleman that you can see down here on the right hand side is Fred Olsen Jr. So he's the chairman of the business and he's very much involved in every intricate detail of Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, the ships and even down to the destinations and the brochure um, that we provide for you. So when we purchased these new ships, obviously they were pretty much a blank canvas for us. We were deciding on colour schemes, carpet schemes and making them sure that they were going to be in line with uh, what our regular guests know and love about Fred Olsen. So these will give you some ideas of the colour schemes. We've got the oriental rooms, which is uh, like the tea rooms where you can go and explore and taste all the wonderful teas from various destinations around the world. So our guys and girls, um, we've flown a lot of our crew back already. So we are ready to set sail again on the 5th of July. So we're very much involved in laying carpets and making sure that those ships are spick and span for you. Just to give you an idea, even some of the carpets on board, Fred Olsen Jr. himself has designed and had them made in India and shipped over to Scotland ready for laying on the new ship. So this will give you an idea of the certainly the space on board the ship. So this is the piano bar, as you can see here. So we've been upgrading the soft furnishings. We've reupholstered the chairs, the lighting, the carpets, you name it. We've pretty much changed it all. This will give you an idea of what the observatory uh, lounge looks like. So you'll most likely spend many times up here, whether it's pre or after dinner, just for some drinks and very much um, a popular area on board for scenic cruising, which, of course, we do a lot of being that we have smaller ships. We can get closer to the coastline. We can hug those destinations a little bit closer and go and see some amazing things that you wouldn't otherwise see uh, if you were on a land holiday or indeed on a bigger ship. So one of the additions to the Fred Olsen fleet are going to be the demonstration theatres. So these are going to be on the two new ships that we have, Borealis and Boletta. So it's going to be a great extra theatre where our chefs and our bar staff and all, all those um, culinary experiences that you'll be visiting around the world will be able to showcase for you on board our ship. So it's just another lounge area and something extra to keep you entertained on board. And I do think it's going to be a very, very popular area on board, with the, especially with the chefs doing their demonstrations. And of course, when it comes to the cabins and the accommodation on board, the cabins are much larger than what we had previously on Boudicca and Black Watch. And of course, the colour schemes, they're like you can see here, this will give you an idea of the colour schemes that we've uh, brought to life with the two new ships. So we've been upgrading the accommodation and all the facilities that you would have found in our previous vessels, such as tea and coffee making facilities in your cabins. So it's very much a British market that we do um, target towards. So we know that people like to wake up in the morning and make their own cup of tea, whereas we know that you don't have those facilities on all other cruise lines. So as you can see here, just uh, different grades of cabins. You've got the one on the left with a picture window. The one on the right um, has a slight balcony that you can go out onto as well. So very spacious. So why would you choose a Fred Olsen cruise, particularly if you've never cruised with us previously? Well, first of all, we have much smaller ships. So our smaller ships present several benefits. Our new ships have been bought specifically with this in mind. Smaller ships allow access to places that bigger ships simply cannot reach. It also means less guests on board, allowing us to offer a more personal and friendly service. We always design everything on board with safety and comfort in mind. So very much on a smaller ship, you're going to get to know your fellow passengers and certainly you're going to get to know the crew members and they're also going to get to know you. We are the cruise line in the UK with the highest number of repeat passengers. So our repeat passenger is nearly at 70%. And I think that speaks volumes in itself. Our guests love to come back. They get remembered and greeted by the crew year after year. Smaller ships mean that we can also pass under bridges, pass through canals and locks, and dock a lot closer to the destination that the big ships simply cannot get to. 
So we have um, a number of UK departure ports for 2022. So it does make things a lot uh, nice and easy to get to your local port. And we've, of course, planned the itinerary sailing from these ports as well. The new ports introduced for 2022 include Portsmouth or the return of Portsmouth, the return of Belfast and the return of London Tilbury. So we are pleased to say that we now cruise from more than UK ports than any other cruise line within the UK. So that doesn't mean you have to come over to the mainland anymore. You can simply get yourself to Belfast and join one of our fantastic itineraries. Cruises closer to home. So, of course, uh, for the remainder of this year, we are looking at cruises that are slightly closer to home around the British Isles, around Ireland and, of course, to those green destinations. But when it comes to 2022, uh, hopefully the world is back open and we can carry on and continue to explore the world over. So we have won lots of awards. So just to give you an idea of Fred Olsen Cruise Lines, we have over 170 years of maritime experience behind us. We have weathered our fair share of storms and we're proud of the awards that we've picked up in recent years. We are a fifth generation family run business. We've seen a number of world wars and I'm sure we've seen a number of pandemics previously as well. But we've weathered them all and we've come out stronger than ever. So over the last, particularly over the last 12 months, we have won a lot of awards, even though we haven't really been sailing. And the awards that we've won for our customer service and the way that we handled our customers and cancellations during this unprecedented times. So we're really, really pleased to see that our customer service has shone through. We've also won Cruise Critic Awards for the best cruise line itineraries for a number of years, consecutive years as well. So that means, again, that when we plan our itineraries, uh, we are winning awards for them. So we know that we're doing things right with our itineraries. So let's have a look at the journey planning and where it really all begins. So what are you, our guests, looking for? So at the end of every cruise, we do obviously give our guests uh, questionnaires to give us some feedback on the itineraries, the ships, the destinations, and even the tours that we visit worldwide. So we know that after a lot of research, many of our guests, like some of them, prefer some pure relaxation when they're on board a cruise. Some of them like to go and explore a journey maybe to the ends of the earth. And some of you like a bit of culture and exploration. Some of you might like a combination of all of those things. So we try to make sure that we've got all of this within our cruise itineraries. So everything we do is tailored to you, our guests. So like I said, we listen to your feedback. We then put that into place so every single year when we're planning our itineraries, which are not normally done two to three years in advance, we always start with a blank canvas and we never do bus routes and we never repeat the same itineraries. We always try to improve year on year. We look at our onshore experiences as well. So it's not just about what's happening on board, not just about the destinations that we're taking you to, but also what you can do in these destinations. We also look at calendar and seasonal events, making sure our ships are in the best place at the best possible time of year, whether that will involve um, some worldwide events such as the Monaco Grand Prix, the Rio Carnival, New Year's Eve down in Sydney, New Year's Eve in Singapore, the Flower Festival down in Madeira, the Northern Lights up in uh, Norway. There are so many calendar and seasonal events that we take in to make sure that our ships are in the best place at the best possible time so that you, our guests, get the best enjoyment out of your cruise. And smaller ship benefits, we make sure that we plan the itineraries so that we're getting the best out of these destinations. Being on a smaller ship, we can take you into some smaller intricate fjords in and around Norway and, and Chile. We can take you under bridges. We can dock a lot closer to the city centres, particularly in places like St. Petersburg. Being smaller ships, we can go under the bridges and dock right in the heart of the city. So once you're off that gangway, you are there. You don't need to be bussed into city centres. We are right there for you. And of course, being on smaller ships, we can also do a lot of river cruising and canal cruising, a lot more scenic cruising. So there is actually things to look at while you are on board. So all of these mixed in makes us um, an outstanding cruise line and why we have won lots of awards for our itineraries. For 2021, uh, particularly with the cruises going around the UK and Scotland, we've also partnership with Orca. So Orca is the wildlife charity. 
So they're going to be on our ships as well, uh, going to be spotting lots of wildlife, marine life um, in and around our British Isles. So let's move on and look at some of the 2022 regional departures that we have going from Belfast. So unfortunately, we don't have anything for 2021. The closest departures for you are most likely going to be the Liverpool departures for this year. So uh, looking forward, we're looking at 2022 and we've got six Belfast departures in total for you. And the first one I'm going to talk about is going to be Grace's Escorted Group. So Grace will be coming on board with a number of our guests from the Belfast and Northern Ireland area. She's going to be offering local pickups from Derry, London Derry, Limavady. I hope I'm pronouncing these right, Grace, yeah. Coleraine yeah. and Ballymena. So you'll be able to pick up a coach transportation from one of those areas and take you over to Belfast to join the ship. And of course, at the end of your cruise holiday, there'll be transport to take you back home again. So Grace will be coming on board and she'll be there for as much or as little as needed on board your escorted group. So the cruise uh, that Grace is going to be hosting is an eight night cruise from Belfast on the 10th of June for 2022. It's going to be on board Borealis and it's called the Scenic Isles of Scotland. The prices start from £1,299 per person. So you're in for eight days of Scottish discovery with lots and lots of scenic cruising in and around the small inlets and a lot of islands up and around Scotland. Um, and again, being on a smaller ship, this image here just shows you how close that you are going to be able to get some of these fantastic um, scenery and fantastic photo shots around the Scottish islands. So just into a little bit more detail about your particular journey. So you're going to be able to visit uh, Rothsay and the Isle of Bute. Uh, this particular port of call is actually a maiden port of call for us this year in 2021. Uh, so we've decided to keep it in the itinerary for 2022 going forward. So you'll be able to explore some um, quite unique destinations up and around here. And I believe that although I've never been, I believe that the Rothsay Castle is certainly a highlight on this particular voyage. You'll then be cruising by Mull, uh, the Mull of Kintyre. So again, uh, you'll be able to view some wild landscapes and historic sites uh, from the ship. Cruising by Duarte Castle as well. So you'll be able to get close and personal to this castle from the shoreline. Um, and it dates back to the 13th century. And some of these destinations and views you wouldn't actually necessarily be able to see from land or it, it'd be quite difficult to get to. So when we're cruising by, um, it's, a, it's a great place and great experience to see some of these coastal scenes. Cruising the Sound of Mull as well. So flowing between the Isle of Mull and the shores of Scotland is the Sound of Mull. And it's a beautiful stretch of water that forms part of the Atlantic Ocean. Fingal's Cave, um, the Isle of Staffa, is another big highlight. So Fingal's Cave, very much like Giant's Causeway, I believe, is a beautiful basalt cave with distinctive columns and a remarkable symmetry that looks incredible as you cruise past. So again, when we're cruising past, we'll be able to slow the ships right down and be able to have commentary on board our ships as we're cruising by to give you all the details and uh, so that you know exactly what you're going to be looking at. And then cruising by Dutchman's Cap. Um, due to its unmistakable shape, is one of the most distinctive landmarks of discovery in Scotland. And of course, we'll be able to spot lots of wildlife, lots of puffins, birds, sea wildlife as well on this particular voyage. Then you'll be coming into the port of call of Portree on the Isle of Skye. It's the largest and liveliest town set within a pretty natural harbour with bright coloured houses. So you will be able to get off the ship and explore um, this beautiful little place of Portree. Invergordon is another stop on your cruise located in the, um, the head of the Commentary Firth in the sc stunning Scottish Highlands. Serves as a gateway to the legendary waters of Loch Ness. So if you want to go and explore some of the lochs from Invergordon, of course, there'll be shore excursions on offer to take you. Um, it is actually one of the cruise and one of the shore excursions I've done. It was thoroughly enjoyable. Get a great 
scenic view of Loch Ness. Uh, you'll also be visiting the Port of Court of Kirkwall. Um, again, it's another highlight on this particular cruise, visiting the Orkney Islands. And of course, it resonates with ancient echoes of history. And it's a town that certainly feels a lot more Scandinavian than it does Scotland. And then you'll be coming to your last port of call is going to be Liverpool before returning back into Belfast. Now, just to advise you that there might not be any um, shore excursions available from the ship on this particular port of call, mainly because it's going to be a turnaround port. So you will be sharing this uh, cruise with obviously people that join and leave the ship in Liverpool. So on this particular day, you'll be able to um, use it as another port of call and be able to go and explore the Royal Albert Docks, the Beatles Museum, the Cabin Club, the Cathedral, the Tate Museum, all of which are certainly very much walking distance from where the ship will dock. And then you just need to be back on time, ready for departure, ready to set sail back to Belfast. So that's Grace's group. Uh, like I said, she will be hosting and escorting that particular voyage with us on the 10th of June for 2022. So if you would like to sign up and join Grace on that one, uh, then feel free to get in touch with her after this presentation. So I'm now just going to talk about some of the other departures that we have going from Belfast. They're not going to be escorted by Grace, but they will, of course, be uh, departures that we have in 2022. Now, the first one I'm going to mention is a nine night cruise on the 26th of May 2022 from Belfast. Again, all on board Borealis. Now, this so far has been a very, very popular cruise. So um, if you are interested in heading over to Norway straight from Belfast, then I would advise um, not delaying it because cabins are selling pretty quickly. Again, being on a smaller ship, we can take you to places the big ships can't simply get to. We also operate on a more of an environmentally friendly fuel. So that means that we can still visit places like Flom, which some other cruise lines are no longer able to visit because of the environmental impacts of the largest, some of the larger ships and some of the fuel that they use on board. We are still fortunate able to be uh, take you into Flom. And it certainly is a highlight on this particular voyage with the Flom Railway. You also have ports of call in Idafjord, Olden and Bergen, as well as a lot more scenic cruising. Again, being on a smaller ship, we can take you in and out of the uh, more intricate destinations over in Norway. There is also a port of call in Lerwick just to break up the journey um, from Belfast over to Norway. Now, if anyone is interested in booking that one, it's £1,499 per person with a free drinks package or an upgrade free drinks package upgrade, or £125 per person on board spending credit. So depending on what you prefer on your cruise, whether you like to come off the cruise at the end and not have to worry about your bar bill at the end, you can have the drinks package, bearing in mind that when you are visiting Norway, it can be quite an expensive country. So it's worth even just having a coffee in the morning before going ashore. So it's certainly worthwhile with the drinks package. Or if you did want to use any of your onboard spending credit, you can certainly use that towards any of the tours available in Norway, such as the Brixdor Glacier or any of the um, waterfalls and the power stations that you can visit in uh, or from Idafjord as well. So it's a very popular cruise already from Belfast. Another one here is exploring the scenic Faroe Islands. So this one's going out on the 4th of June for 2022. It's a six night departure. Um, joining and departing in Belfast and you'll be able to go up and again explore the Faroe Islands and a lot more of the scenic cruising around the Faroe Islands as well. And that starts at 899. So it's a great taster cruise. If you've never cruised with Fred Olsen before, it's six nights. You can jump on, go up to probably some of the islands that you may never have even considered visiting. They're not too far away. Um, and again, being on a cruise to these destinations is certainly the perfect way to explore them. We also have a very exciting cruise up to Iceland. It's called the Wales Waterfalls and Geysers of Iceland, setting sail on the 18th of June 2022 for nine nights. Very, very popular itinerary indeed. And even more so now, I guess Iceland is on the green travel list that lots of people are going up, not just uh, for 2021, but also they're looking at Iceland for 2022. Iceland's really in the spotlight at the moment. 
This is a um, circumnavigation of Iceland with an overnight stay in Reykjavik. So that gives you plenty of time to go and explore the waterfalls, the geysers, spend um, an afternoon or an evening up in the Blue Lagoon as well. Then you'll come around to Isafjord and on the north coast it's a lot of more scenic cruising in and out of the fjords of Iceland um, before returning back into Belfast. It really is a fantastic itinerary and there's an amazing amount of shore excursions on offer. Um, Iceland is certainly a destination from my experience that you need to get out, get into the countryside and see all the wonderful thermal springs uh, that Iceland of course is most famous for. Lots of whales, whale um, spotting on this one as well, lots of wildlife and of course lots of bird life. And going up in June, it's going to be not quite land of the midnight sun, but certainly not far off it. I think the Arctic Circle just uh, touches the very north coast of Iceland. So it's going to be getting dark probably about 11.50 p.m. in the evening. So not quite midnight sun, but uh, very not far off of it. So um, you'll be up in the observatory bar, you'll be out on deck and it'll be 11, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning and it will pretty much still be daylight. Scenic Isles of, and Locks of Scotland. So this is another itinerary similar to the one Grace is hosting, but slightly different destinations. It's a seven night departure from Belfast again on the 20th of July. Um, and again, similar ports of call, you've got Invergord and Lerwick, uh, Rothsay, Portray, at uh, just a slightly different time of year. This is a fantastic itinerary. Um, I have done Greenland myself a number of times and it's never, ever, ever been a destination that's been on my bucket list. But my goodness, did it deliver when I was up there. Seeing some of these uh, scenes of the glaciers, the ice falling off into the fjords is absolutely incredible. So if you've not done Greenland, I uh, certainly recommend adding it to your list. So you, this one's combined with Iceland. It's a 13 night departure on the 27th of July, 2022. Prices start at 2499 with a free drinks package or £150 onboard spending credit. And again, you can use that onboard spending credit towards your excursions, uh, your drinks, any drinks that you're not having with the drinks package. If you want to go and have um, anything done in the salon, if you want to buy anything from the shops, etc, etc. Uh, so it really is a fantastic itinerary. However, I just need to advise you that although you will can join the itinerary here in Belfast, actually the last port of call on this one is Liverpool. So you can do the 13 nights and uh, get yourself home from Liverpool, fly home or get the ferry across uh, back home. Or if you have the time and you have the money, you could actually stay on board for the next cruise, which is actually heading over to Canada. So this cruise will set sail from Liverpool. And of course, you can see that the last port of call is Belfast. So you could do uh, this cruise, which is 13 nights, and you could do this cruise, which is 15 nights as a back to back. And that would mean that you could set off from Belfast and return back to Belfast without the worry of getting the ferry or flying back home. So this is a rugged and rural Canada cruise for, on the 9th of August for 15 nights. And that one starts at 2499. So if you wanted an extended cruise, you want to do a back to back cruise, you could see Iceland, Greenland and Canada all in one long voyage. So again, rugged and rural Canada is those destinations that might you might be off the beaten track where the smaller ships can get to, and the bigger ships can't get to. Um, and again, it's setting sail on the 9th of August. So they are all the departures that we have leaving from Belfast in 2022. So if you are new to Fred Olson or if you've cruised with us before, we do, of course, have Fred Olson's enjoyment promise. So this means that if you do book a cruise with us and you book more than 12 weeks in advance and you come on board and you realise that actually maybe Fred Olson isn't for you, then all you have to do is let us know within 48 hours of being on board. We will give you a full refund if you're not enjoying your cruise and we will uh, fly you home from the first available port of call. So it's our stamp, it's our promise to say we pretty much guarantee that you will come on board and enjoy our cruises. But if you really aren't enjoying them, then let us know. We'll give you a full refund and we'll get you home at our cost from your first port of call. 
So uh, I don't think we can be any fairer than that. And that's probably why we are attracting a lot of first timers to Fred Olsen, and particularly from the Northern Ireland region as well, now that we are sailing back out of Belfast. So the drinks package, um, some of the departures do have this um, free if you want it. Um, if you don't want it or it's not free on the particular voyage that you've chosen, it is a cost of £19 per person per night. So that simply means you can get off at the end of your cruise, and not have a bar bill to worry about, which I think is a great, great thing. Um, if you don't do the drinks package, if you don't think that you will spend £19 per person per day on drinks, then our, the cost of our cruise, uh, sorry, the cost of our drinks on board are still very reasonable. And a lot of people actually come on board and say, gosh, I can buy a gin and tonic cheaper on board a Fred Olsen cruise than I can in my local pub at home, for example. So our prices are very reasonable and all the prices on board our ships are in sterling. So if you do want any more information, we do have um, a Miles Morgan digital overbrand brochure that we can send over to you. Uh, it is available online. Grace, I'm sure, can send it over to you or send you a link if you can't find it. If you just want a little bit more detail on any of those itineraries, then uh, we do have the brochure available for you as well. If anybody has quizzed with us um, and unfortunately had any cancellations, particularly in the last 12, 18 months or so, uh, let us know if you are sitting on any vouchers and we can put those towards uh, your next cruise for you. So just let Grace know if you need or if you have any vouchers that we can um, offset against your new cruise with us. And then there's updated plane sailing guarantee. So some of you out there, I'm sure, may be slightly hesitant about booking a holiday, booking a cruise, whether it's for this year, 2022 or even 2023, which we do have departures on sale for. We um, can assure you that you can book your cruise in complete peace of mind. If uh, you are booking a cruise now and you decide later on that you need to change that itinerary, you can do so as long as you let us know before the final balance is due, which is normally three months before departure date. But we can transfer that deposit over to an alternative cruise at no admin fees. We will just simply switch it over to your next chosen cruise. So that's the plain sailing guarantee. And of course, if you are booking anything for this year and then um, should you have to cancel, um, we have to cancel anything like that, then uh, you would be entitled to a refund on those deposits as well. So uh, you can book in confidence with our plain sailing guarantee. Again, if you do have any more questions, particularly about that, and I guess people may have more questions with that regarding 2021 departures than they do 2022, because fingers crossed, uh, we should be back to sailing uh, around the world like we, we plan to for 2022 onwards. So that just leads me to um, ask you if you have any questions at all, uh, feel free to shout at me now and ask your questions. Um, if not, I'm sure that Grace may be able to answer them later on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kerry. Martin, any questions? No, thank you. That was very interesting, very informative. I like the idea of the smaller ship as well. Good. Definitely. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge advantage, actually. I mean, I've, like I said, I've cruised on board uh, for seven years with Fred Olsen as a crew member. And some of the destinations and how closer we get to these destinations is incredible. I mean, I've been in places like Bordeaux down in France. You're, the gangway's there and you're in the city centre. You couldn't be any closer. Uh, whereas the big ships have to dock in Cadiz. And then they ha you have to get on a coach for maybe an hour, an hour and a half into the heart of the city uh, when you're going up to places like Seville. We're already there. We cruise up the river. It's a much more scenic cruise um, and our guests love it. Yeah. Can I just ask a quick question, Kerry, on the drinks packages? If anyone, um, if they do decide to take, do both passengers have to take it? That's correct, yeah. So if they're sharing a cabin, they either both have it or they both don't. Yeah. Perfect. Yep. Um, and as far as the capacity on the ships for 22, are you going to fill capacity or have you reduced? Down for 2022, no, we haven't reduced our capacity at all. We are full steam ahead, fingers crossed. Everything is back to normal by 2022. But obviously um, our guests and our crew safety is our number one paramount. Mm -hmm. So should 
the government in the future say actually you need to reduce your capacity but the great advantage particularly with the new ships as well is that you can social distance without social distancing because there's so much more space on board our ships yeah obviously everyone has to be fully vaccinated actually no um no so we are very much following the uk government um guidance and as it currently stands they haven't specified that our guests have to be fully vaccinated now when it comes to our clientele most of them would have received their second vaccine by the time we set sail on the 5th of june i'm in my 30s i actually have my first vaccine this afternoon believe it or not so um even for the younger audience that were going on board our ships not that we have i mean our age demographic i would generally say is 45 plus um so no people don't have to have the vaccine to come on board our ships but should that change between now and the 5th of july then we follow the government guidelines and we'll let you know but that isn't the case at the moment okay. i don't think i have anything more to ask that's great and thanks for the presentation it was very good Thank you. No problem at all. That's all right. Hope to see you on board one day soon. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. Well, listen, I appreciate everything you've done. Kerry, thank you uh, for coming on board and giving us all the information. And no we problem. To hopefully having some people going on board with you. And I think that's about it. Okay. All the best. Thank Fabulous. You. Thank you. Bye. Kerry, I'll speak to you soon. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Carrie, you're still